Fan Hotline presented by Sullivan Super Service, Pittsburgh Trusted Plumbing and HVAC Service for over 50 years. And joining us on that hotline right now is our buddy, our pal, our friend from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, covers the Steelers and Pitt for that outlet. He is Chris Carter. Good morning to you, Chris. How you doing today, buddy? I'm all right, fellas. How y'all doing today? We are doing outstanding. So were you at this super secret Bill Steelers practice that wound up not being super secret? Absolutely, I was. I was <laughs> tweeting live from there. Yeah, that's why we had John. I knew the answer to that question already. So, <laughs> all right, Carter. Apart from quarterback, because we spent a lot of time on quarterback, we'll continue to spend a lot of time on quarterback. Now it's not cutting time. It's game two to preseason now. And you're going to see the starters for four series about Mike Tomlin said yesterday. What are you looking for? We'll start 30,000. We'll narrow down on some things. I'll start with the offensive line because that's the group that the Steelers have been investing the most in, and that's the group that they're hoping to see better overall. I, I think one guy that you should expect to see a lot of, and I, I know I think Doran, be prepared for yourself because this guy over here is about to lose it, but Zach Frazier I think is, is, is primed to have a very good game. I thought he was exceptionally good in the joint practice. I Ooh. saw him win reps against Daquan Jones. Mm. Uh, the first play of 11 on 11 with the Steelers offense versus the Bills defense, Najee Harris cuts to the left and cuts back to the inside and takes off for a 40 yard touchdown. Zach Frazier just like folded his, his, his side in uh, away so that it kind of opened up the middle part of the field. And it's been so long since the Steelers have had someone that could do that. And I think you're starting to see that come to the light there. But also, not just Zach Frazier, Broderick Jones, not that he's not started before, but he's looked really good. I thought he didn't have his best preseason game, but in this joint practice, I saw him go up against Greg Rousseau, who's a good young pass rusher in the NFL. Beat him, shut him out, did never let him get past him. Then they put Von Miller on him, and we all know Von Miller. He's not in his prime anymore, but that's a Hall of Famer right there. And he was able to win consistently against Von Miller. I'd be very interested to see how this group does as a whole on Saturday night because they looked very strong. And if they look at, if they can look very strong consistent, consistently throughout the season, it will do a world of hurt upon opponents because that is how the Steelers offense wants to operate this year. Wear you down be physical, be the bullies. And I, I think we're starting to see more and more inklings of that throughout practices. I, I think everybody knows, Chris, that the, the point of joint practices is to obviously go against different guys in a practice setting. It is to do the different, mm -hmm. uh, the different drills in a practice setting against different people. And whenever you, you think about the AFC and you think about the division and you think about teams like Cincinnati, you think about even the Browns and obviously the Ravens, um, the way that they beat people is explosive offense. So whenever you're at this practice yesterday, if I wanted, if I personally want to ask you a question about a position and narrow it to one position and how they looked, it would be the defensive backs. How did the defensive backs, Joey Porter Jr., um, Corey Trice, even Minka, uh, Deshaun Elliott, KZ, how did they look going against the Buffalo Bills skilled players during practice? I thought they looked really good. Honestly, I felt like the Buffalo Bills, that might have been like the, like one of the worst signs for them this year yeah. was how their receivers were lining up with the Steelers DBs. Not because the Steelers DBs are bad, but because I thought they, they really took them out uh, in several situations. Josh Allen did not have his way with the Steelers secondary in this practice. Now, granted, I did not watch all of the defense, the Steelers defense versus the Bills offense. They kind of ran simultaneously, like the Bills defense, Bills offense was on one side, the Bills defense was on the other. So I kind of had to pick and choose. But when I focused on the Bills offense versus the Steelers defense, I saw a Steelers secondary that was not just hanging with those guys, but making plays. Hmm. Corey Trice has looked very good uh, since they've kind of let him run with the ones this week. Dante Jackson has has some bumps and bruises. They're happy to let him rest. I think they're very confident about him. They love his speed and the way that he plays the game. But Corey Trice, since he's been in there, he's looked as good as a number two as anybody we've seen. He has the length. He has the size. He has the speed. And he is locking up people. Um, I, even even outside of Josh Allen, Mitch Trubisky came in came into the the the, uh, the, play, the game and or the practice 
And during there, they did a two minute drill and he kept going at Corey Trice and Corey Trice only allowed one catch. And on a fourth down, Mitch Trubisky actually threw a pretty good ball it was a back shoulder fade to try to win, to try to win the two minute drill in the end zone. And Corey Trice played it perfectly. Didn't let his guy get separation, waited for the ball, knocked it down. And, and the Steelers actually won twice against the Bills offense in the two minute drill. They stopped them early. They forced a reset and then they got another fourth down and they were able to stop him again. So been very impressed by them. Joy Porter Jr. has been kind of Ike Taylor-ish. Like he just takes people away. Mm. He doesn't he he doesn't get all, like crazy interceptions or anything like that, but you're also not seeing him get get beat regularly throughout practice. Like um, he played at so college. I think the uh, yeah, exactly. And I think that's that's kind of what you want, right? You, you want corners that don't give up big plays. And it, that can, and that might not be, you know, sexy. That might not be hot. That might not be the thing that, you know, that, that, that turns heads and gets people get you highlights. But that's the stuff that makes really good defenses. And I think Joey Porter Jr. is doing that. Now, the people who listen to our show get turned on by passes defense. They totally do. I know I do. Fan Morning Show is brought to you by Guardian Protection, your hometown home and business security company. And Chris Carter of the Post Gazette's joining us here on the Fan Morning Show. And I tweeted out a quote that he had about Zach Frazier. And while you're doing the interview, you retweeted it. So that is just next level promotion there by Chris and Carter. Multitask. Multitask. Ta- I can't even talk. You can't say it. Can't you even can't say multi- multitask. You, you, no, no, you can't. Unreal. All right, Carter. So now we get to the quarterbacks. And we have, you have seen, everyone has seen Russ Wilson in a limited capacity, at least compared to Justin Fields. But what you have seen out of Russ, compare that to Justin. Who's playing more consistently? Who's playing at a higher level? Kind of uh, juxtapose those two, if you will. So I've been very impressed by Justin Fields' ability to grow in this camp. When I've been watching him early on in camp, he was kind of erratic at times, didn't look like he understood where he was going with the football, wasn't confident in his progressions, wasn't, wasn't consistent in his footwork. And like you saw all, all, kind of like the all over the placeness that we saw in Chicago and mini camp, and that, that kind of all bled over to the start of camp. But by, I'd say, the second week of camp on, he became very consistent. I think that the Steelers let him kind of come as he was, and they said, hey, be who you want to be. Be who you, be, be, you know, do the things that feel naturally to you. Then we will try to, to work with you and try to improve those. Right. And I think that he's taken every single day very strongly and he has improved by a lot. And now he is very consistent. He is going through his progressions. He's more accurate with the football. He's not making erratic plays. He's, he's being within the structure of the play. And I think that's so important for the future of Justin Fields. But the thing is, is that Russell Wilson has not practiced with the ones through most of training camp. It's very it's, it's been actually very rare compared to how to how often Justin Fields has done it. And the thing is is that Russell Wilson is coming in with the ones and there's there's no warm up. It's just he's there. He's got it. He's he he know he knows where to go first read, second read, third read, ball out. And and, and that's been kind of who he is. And then you also know Russell Wilson, sometimes the, he'll he'll go through the first three and like, "Yeah, no, I want to play around a little bit. I'm going to move left, move right." Now I'll throw this 40-yard bomb to Connor Hayward. He also loves for some reason to throw to Connor Hayward like Whenever Connor Hayward's downfield, he, he's like, I want that guy. And he'll throw it to him, and Connor Hayward will catch it. So um, Russell Wilson, I think the thing is that I, – and I say this all the time on Locked on Steelers, on North Shore Drive. I, I talk about – I say Russ, or Justin Fields has closed the gap on Russell Wilson simply because Justin Fields is better. But he has not overtaken Russell Wilson because Russell Wilson – has all the things that the Steelers want Justin Fields to be make consistent already in his game. So Russell Wilson's going to start in this game. Uh, you know, I talked about this with Jerry Dulac on today's North Shore Drive podcast. Uh, he goes over his expectations and what he hears on the team. He expects Russell Wilson to probably go two drives with the first team offense, and then maybe Justin Fields to go two drives with the first team offense. So I think that that's going to be interesting to see the contrast between the two of them. But I, I, this is still Russell Wilson's job by far. But I think what Justin Fields has done is that now the Steelers look at him and they say, you know what, if Russell goes down, this is not panic time. It's Go back, go in there and run the same offense and do a few things different. Because one thing that Justin Fields does have on Russell Wilson, Wilson used to be a more mobile guy who would always use his legs. And now like he uses his legs to buy time, but not to get as many yards. Justin Fields, when he runs the ops, the quarterback option, is dangerous. Like they, the, the Steelers did their seven shots drill against the Bills defense. And when they put Justin Fields in, he, I think he, they scored every single time. And one of the times is a QB option where he put a defender on an island and the defender's like, uh, what do I pick? And by the time he realized what was going on, Justin Fields was like jogging into the end zone. It was, it was pretty crazy. So 
Fields has done a really great job this camp. And I think that he's he has done things that I think could end up lengthening his career. Russell Wilson, though, is still QB1 in for good reason. Chris, great stuff, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate the time. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. Yes, sir. Have a good day, y'all. You right. too. Chris Carter of the Post-Gazette. He had a little twang to that, y'all. He did. He threw a y'all in there.